Alright, so this is the next project. I have a Revell P61 Black Widow, and it's been a while since I've done one of these for a video. Uh, the last one I did was a B47 back in December, and since then I was also able to uh, get an A10 Warthog completely built. So I decided why not film this one. Now I already did some work to it. I got some decals, some paint, everything put on it. Um, I would say I'm just about like 3% done. So I can just uh, finish the rest on video. Now I kind of like this little cover art right here. I don't know what this is right here. Some unknown Japanese aircraft right there. And I don't think we're going to get to that amount of uh, quality, but we're going to get it just about as good as the, P, uh, the B-47, so let's get this opened up. Alright, as you can see, I already got some decals uh, put onto it. We got the instructions manual pieces. This has way more pieces than the B-47. You even have to build the engine, like the inside of the engine and everything. So this is definitely going to take longer than the uh, two other projects I've done. This is the most difficult one. Oh. Alright, hold on. Alright, here's all the pieces I already got painted. Now, they were originally black, but they are way too glossy. Hold on, I gotta turn on autofocus. Way too glossy, so I painted it. So you can see we got the decals on already. So let's just set all these out. This one doesn't have a decal on it. I don't think that side has a decal. It doesn't look like it. These are all the wings. Oh, I forgot I got the turret finished. See, look at it. You even gotta paint the parts that you won't even be able to see. Anyway. Oh. There's the turret. Pretty shiny. This is the uh, nose. You actually had radar in there. We actually have to build the radar too. Somewhere on here. You won't be able to see the radar when we're finished, but... You know, we just have to build it. Because... It, it's there, so... Yeah. We already got some interior pieces. I painted that with a paint marker. Another interior piece. Doubt you'd be able to see those. Propellers. Part right there. More wings. And here's the uh, floor, interior floor. Which I think I painted the wrong side. I mean, why is this all detailed? I don't know. I'll have to check that out. These are the clear pieces for windows. Here's a cockpit canopy. Looks like it's in numerous parts. These are the chairs that I'm going to build. Oh, I think I got more olive drab, didn't I? Is this new olive drab? We ran out of olive drab already. Oh, yeah, look, it's not even open yet. This must be the old one, then. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to look at the instructions manual and see where we left off, because I don't know. Okay, so we're still at number one, and looks like we're going to build the chairs. So, let's get all the right paints for that now. All right, so these are all the colors we need just for the chairs. Like, uh, most of it is this, uh, zinc chromate, which is like a yellowish olive drab. Uh, but we don't have that, so I'm just gonna use the good old olive drab. Where does it say olive drab? Well, it doesn't seem to say it on here, but it definitely did on the shelf. So... 
Let's get to work, because I know this is going to take a while. Alright, got the paint opened, and uh, the stuff out, ready to paint. Looks like it already had some left over from the last can. A step far back, because this one doesn't spread that easily, and it just makes a puddle, so you want to stand back. Just going to hold it still. Oh. That's fine. That thing keeps flying around. All right, we got that pretty good. It's a little much, but it works. And this, let's just set it on its back. All right, that's good. That's good. All right. Next up, A. What's A? Aluminum. I guess we can get these little pieces right here. Just stick it on the opposite side. So that way none of the chrome gets on it. There we go. There. Alright, this is also new, but I just used it on the majorette. So it should Oh it does it does work good, see? That's from the test I did earlier. It does look like it does spray quite far, but it's not going to hit it, so let's just hit go at an angle. Swearing, you have like stick tape down or something over here. Good. I actually seem to. Do very well. And then the black. I don't think we need the black because that's all for tiny things. Which we can just get with the marker. And I already got this done. I don't, I don't understand what this is, but... Okay. Okay, so that means we need a decal, and it's right there, so it must be 7, decal number 7, which is right here. So I got a little uh, fire extinguisher label. Well, that's not a fire extinguisher, actually. It's tiny. It should be able to, it should be easy to work with. But I don't have a bucket of water out here yet. So let's just keep going on to this step. Oh boy. Now did I do that right? Hold on, where is it? Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. On the bottom. I am so confused. <laughs> but okay. Do I paint the bottom of this too? Or not? I'll look ahead in the book, see what we do with it. I mean, I can't really. Very confusing. Um, okay, well, it doesn't look like you're going to see it, but I feel like just painting it anyway, because 
I mean, it's not the even, it's not even the right black we wanted anyway. So let's just give that some olive drab as well. What could go wrong? Lots of things, lots of things could go wrong. We'll just have to wait and see. Just gotta walk around it. That's that's a good cover. It always seems like there's so much on it, but when it's done, it looks okay. I mean, really, we shouldn't. This isn't the kind of spray paint that you would usually work on a product like this I just don't have any of that like uh, fancy spray paint stuff you use with an air compressor uh, I don't have that yet I don't know if I'll ever get one here okay now see right here this says these need to be painted H which is oh crap which is a uh, gray right and then the other one should be painted I, which is gunmetal. But when you get down there, it says one side's supposed to be H, the other side's supposed to be I. So I don't know what is going on with that. Actually, I might now. Okay, what is that in the first place? Okay, so it actually looks like it's the ammo for the giant, like, uh, cannons on it, wherever they are. You can kind of see the individual bullets and stuff. That's, that's my guess, at least. I think I see what it's talking about now. Like, the outer edge is painted with H inner his eye so that clears it up and we got a bunch of more pieces that we have not been introduced to yet yay so where should we start I don't know I feel like doing the uh... <laughs> alright I feel like we should be doing the uh 88, 71, 35. They're all the same color, and they're all pretty important. And then we can get to the wheel, the yoke, whatever that one's called. And do what? Do we paint that one? Is it P again? Yes, so we're going to go with some more olive drab. Oh, i got to get the pieces first. I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, so I grabbed all the pieces that will soon be lost on the floor because uh, this paint likes to push everything around. And before we lose it, I'm going to go ahead and paint as much as I can. And hopefully we'll have it to uh, put on the plane, so let's go. Oh, I missed. I missed that. I am... Okay, that's why I'm using the wrong hand. Hold on. There we go. Little bursts. That's how it's done. Let's get right there. Oh. Told you. Actually, no, that kind of helps. Now I get the back. There we go. Now we wait. I don't know how long. We'll just wait. And figure something else to do while we wait, actually. Because we got all of this to do. We should just get everything... That is one certain color, and just paint it. So let's get number 28. Is that 28? Jeez, 28 is more detailed than it looked. So I'm just going to go ahead, snip that off. I'm going to grab an X-Acto knife and uh, clear off all that. Hello, camera. Look, look back here. No, oh my god. Here, thank you. Got the extra piece of plastic up here. We're just gonna grab an X-Acto knife, cut that off, 
and then we'll also paint it with our olive drab that smells like gummy bears or something. Hold on. Twizzlers, actually. It smells like Twizzlers in here. I keep looking in here, but I know the exact knife is right. Oh, I had it out. That's smart. All right, so now with that all cleared up, let's go ahead, paint it in olive drab too. And I think I'll need the spray paint to do that. Make sure I have it angled right. All right, we're done. That was, wait, stand right here. All right, and we're done. See, that isn't that bad, is it? And it's not that bad, is it? All right, there we go. Now we wait, because we ain't got nothing else to work on. Other than a decal, but... Oh, I did this hot out. Alright, so I checked up on these pieces. They look dry. I still need to paint the back of them, though. These ones are basically done, so we can go ahead and pick them up, take them over here. Don't want to miss the pieces. Set. Set. Yeah. Those are done. We just need to go over these one more time really, really quickly. That uh, chair is scattered around everywhere. Where did I put the... There it is. Excuse me. That didn't work. It's too far back. Alright, that's a lot better. See how easy it is now. Now see, it looked like I put a lot, but it ends up being just fine. All right, let's check about these. These were the second things I spray painted. And I know this uh, enamel stuff takes a little bit longer. So I'll let those sit till everything else is done. In fact, I don't know, are these even done? Yep. Majorette pieces are done. Look at that. That's what I'm... I got one of these from an old project. This one's literally just the primer. I like the primer stuff. It makes it kind of look cool. You can see all the edges and stuff. I don't know how long this stuff takes. I mean, this already looks done. These... Actually, this olive drab stuff works quick. Look at that. Done. Wow. Yeah, that is done. So is that. And when you flip these, yes. Flip both of them. And I'll flip this too. Why not? Oh, if only they, if, if, oh god. If only everything else worked this quick. You know, much farther we'd be in this project. Not that far. Just don't go overboard with it. This olive drab, this is the biggest can. I could find at Hobby Lobby for this. We would go to Ace for more, maybe. That's that's our second place we go, is Ace. That's done, here. This is basically done. Let's go ahead and carry that up there. And uh, let's let, let's check out the, uh, what, what's it called? The, what's it called? The cockpit instruments. Done. Already. It's been like five minutes. Instruments are done. Which leaves us with these chairs and other cockpit stuff. These, actually, 
Oh my god, look at that. I didn't even have to flip it. Oh, yes, I did. Alright, let's just do that. Honestly, I like these projects. They're really time-consuming. And what you get at the end is still extremely fragile. But it's it's cool. Like You get these planes already. I made the B-47, which is literally my favorite plane in the world at the moment. And an A-10 Warthog, which... I also like almost as much as a B-47. We usually get A-10 Warthogs here every year or two. They were here last year. And, and it's cool. You just get to have miniature versions. Like, I got all the boxes from the previous projects over there still. That's, that's where I store them. And this thing had a huge box, too. Like, look at that. That's just about as tall as both of those combined, just for this one project. And I don't think the other two were available either, were they? Okay, yeah, the B-47 was House of Java. A-10 was Ravel. Must be different skill levels or something. I don't really pay attention to that skill level stuff. If I find it interesting and I want to do it, I'll do it. Oh, there's kids screaming. Probably down at the school, playing. Oh boy. Look at that. I mean, there isn't really that much, though. I mean, it's... We've already got this much done. Basically, I mean, we still have all these decals and stuff. Like, these go on the wings. And this thing has huge wings. Like, wings big enough to hold. It's literally, like, three planes mixed together. I think, I think there's this one plane in the Air Force right now that was inspired by it. I don't know the name, but it's like a trainer or something. Or is it a surveillance? I don't know. But the P-61 was interesting. It was the first stealth fighter uh, in the world, I believe. Or maybe in America. But it wasn't a stealth bomber. It was a stealth fighter. It was huge for a fighter, too. Like, back then it was huge, but nowadays it's average, or, like, below average, because this had just about the exact um, length of an F-16, which I've seen F-16s, they are pretty big, but when compared to, like, an F-14 or something, they really can't, they're, they're smaller. F-14s are huge. Um, so, yeah, for its time, this thing was crazy. It was huge. It was a fighter. You had a twin-engine fighter, which, I mean, England really liked those during that time, too, but, um, it was also for night. We painted it in this matte black kind of paint for night missions, which was one of the things, I mean, it was big and bulky, so it couldn't maneuver that well. So what they did was they just packed it with really powerful weapons, and sent it out during night, gave it a radar, which I think this was also the first uh, American aircraft in the Air Force to use radar. I think Britain, uh, Great Britain actually invented it for their aircraft. I don't know, though. But, yeah, they had radars to fight at night. They were huge. Uh, basically... They were like vultures, except they come out at night and, okay, maybe bats, just really, really big, oversized bats, because bats use sonar and all that stuff. Basically, I don't know why they called it a black widow, they could have called it like a bat or like fruit bat or something, because it is literally just a mechanical bat for combat. Oh crap, that's a pun. So anyway, by the time I'm done with that long uh, talk right there, these should be finished. What do you know? Alright, so this concludes. Never mind, it does not, because we still got those. Those things take forever. Oh, we forgot about that stuff too. 
looking nice. And I do remember we gotta paint some stuff on these with paint marker, which takes a while. I need to go grab a hat. It's I can't decide what it feels like outside. Is it hot? Is it cold? I mean, we just had rain and the windows were up. I mean, no, they were down. Uh come on. Give me. Now see. This scale is okay. I know this isn't the same scale I used with my other projects. I think the largest scale I was on was the A10. That was a pretty big scale. Let me go with, let me go check. Alright, A10 was 1 by 48. B47. Don't know what K7 is, but okay. Now, I can't read Japanese. So. Alright then. Don't tell me the scale. One by 72, and I think that's near HO scale, which is a scale my uh, uh, model railroad uses. Let me, what is HO scale? All right, HO scale is one by 87, and what's this? One by four, so yeah, that, that is near HO scale. I wanna see if I can find any HO scale uh, aircraft. Maybe I can make an airport on my layout. Where is that fly? Stupid fly always getting trapped in lights. Alright, anyway. What is this? What is that? I just realized instead of looking through that complicated mess, we could just look it up right here. Oh, it's the gun sight. That's allowed. Katie did. Alright, wind is picking up again. I'm expecting some more rain soon. Also, that light came on for no reason right there. Please rain again. I want it back. Alright, let's start from the front. What I have here is the uh, extended barrel I got from a uh, sniper modulus pack. It uh, doesn't really improve anything. It just kind of looks kind of cool. That's why I put it on there. Um, and it says, hey, uh... I believe aftermarket uh, 12 dart magazine. It's got a nice black and chrome. I really like these. And uh, over here, we got the uh, main part itself. This is the Recon Mark II. This is the only official Recon Mark II uh, piece I have on this. It's really light without anything on it. And, uh, I use it with a bunch of other things. I'll show a different uh, set of stuff I put on it sometimes. This came from that same pack right there. It was originally white and orange, like usually. I have a few pictures of it like that. But this, I uh, I recolored it and got some spray paint. Made it this really cool blue and chrome to kind of match the that stuff. Added a little bit more design to it. It looks cool from far away, but you look up close and uh, see a little bit of stuff. But it's it's good. I like it. And uh, back we got a, I believe it's another um, aftermarket magazine. I think it's a six dart magazine. I don't know if it says that anywhere. But I, I use these most of the time in these two. Uh, they're really, really breakable actually. I think there's already one that we broke, but He's got to take good care of them. I like how they're uh, see-through, too. They're translucent. I think that's the word. And then this is actually the uh, stock from the original Recon. The Recon Mark One that I have in the corner over there. Hiding in with the other first-generation Nerf stuff. Well, actually, there's a dart tag one right there. So, yeah, that's what I uh, usually have put together. And I use it very often, almost every time. But there's a few different versions I use in this little thing right here. All right, let's start with the chairs, which have E. What is E? Flat black, which is good because we got flat back, flat, flat black paint markers right there. 
uh, these are not made specifically for the A-10. You could use any aircraft you want. All right, I don't know if you're gonna get a good view of this. Why is this chair so low? Uh, raise the chair. Much better. I do have like wearable magnifying glasses, but I don't have a hat out here. So I'm just gonna go with my normal vision, unless I, I can find a hat while sitting here. Nope. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do it. I'm. What was that? I see the light flash there for a second. I heard something outside. Anyway, let's get this pack opened. Give me the black. Thank you. Alright, paint markers. There's a few differences between paint markers and normal markers. Number one, they use paint. And you gotta treat them like... Oh crap, I already marked myself. You gotta treat them like spray paint, you gotta shake it, get all the paint in there, and when you first get them, like, there's no paint at the end of it, so it's literally just white, you have to hold it down like this, and you can, you can watch the color flow into it, which I think is really, really fun. So we're gonna paint these little hand, uh, arm, arm cushions right there, and I got the chisel tip, it's got a bullet tip and a chisel tip. Two millimeter bullet tip, four millimeter chisel, but I I normally stick to the chisel anyway. So we're just gonna... Oh. Uh, I usually, I usually just, okay, oh, okay, yeah, that's... See what I'm talking about, you got it. Oh boy. All right. I think that's better. That that's more than good right there. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's fine. Just one stripe, done. And as you can see, I'm gonna try not to get any spread it around. We now have arm cushions. We're gonna set that aside. Let it dry. Uh, I got some on my hands. Just. Rub that off. Ah, my chair fell over. Yeah, don't sit halfway on chairs, because that's going to happen. Alright, next up, just one quick swipe. Boom. You seriously could not mess up with this. There's our second set of arm cushions. And, and more. All right, what's next? Now, do these things bleed through pages? Cause I got a big. Okay, they bleed a little bit through pages, but not too bad. What do we want to do next? All right, let's just do the the the, the wheel, the 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 yoke, the the. <laughs> what am I doing? And what is in semi gloss black? I don't know the difference, so we're both they're both gonna be the same amount of black. Now it looks like it's just the edge parts right there. So I don't wanna go overboard. Alright, actually that's not that bad. I see it drips. I don't recommend paint markers for anything else outside of hobbies, unless maybe construction, because they do tend to drip and stuff. And there we go, look at that. We have our little buttons. I don't know how to stand this up. We don't need to stand it up, actually. We can just set it down, because it's not going to touch. Because it's elevated. Okay, it's stuck to my hand. Anything else we need? No. No, not really. I mean, I guess we can start on the gun sight. Let's just grab the gun sight really quick. 97, right? 97. 97, where? Where's 97? Is that 97? 
six or come on where where is it Nine, oh there's 98 that's not what I want though it's definitely not what I want okay, I'm gonna pause all right see this this right here Oh, my camera is doing that again. All right, this right here, that's our gun sight. Which needs to be painted gray. Was that gray? Flat black. That's gloss black. Let's just paint it black. Why not? Is that good enough? Oh wait, now this one's the one that smells like Twizzlers. Wow. Wow. That's a heavy smell of Twizzlers right there. It's funny, each paint, every color of paint has a different smell. Alright, and once that's done, we can assemble the cockpit at least and call it a day. And it's going to take a while.